Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our webinar tonight, where we are focusing on the different aspects of purchasing your RDA horses. My name is Emma Bayliss. Some of you may recognise me from previous, previous webinars, and I'm the equine coordinator at National Office. Joining me tonight, we have Nick Hart, who is our RDA honorary vet, and he's also the regional vet for Greater London. Nick will be chatting to you about pre-purchase examinations, or PPEs as we used to call them before COVID. And we also have Sarah Healy, who is a regional coach and centre manager at Pennywell's IDA. Pennywell's have recently purchased a new horse and they're always looking for more horsepower. So Sarah's going to have a chat to you about her recent experiences. If any of you've got any questions, please pop it in the Q&A box at the bottom and I will do my best to try and keep on top of those. If you don't have your question answered tonight or if you think of any more questions, please do feel free to email me to ebaylis at rda.org.uk. So some of you may be aware that in January of this year, we launched a pre-purchase examination policy for RDA. This was put together by myself, Doug Smith, who is our equine lead, and Brian Hallows, who is the regional vet for North Wales. Brian is a specialist in the area of PPE, and he's also a veterinary expert witness for dispute resolution. Our PPE policy states that all horses that are purchased or long-term loaned must have a minimum of a two-stage vetting. We realise that many of our groups already do this and we sort of preach into the converted somewhat. But, you know, our reasons for introducing this are predominantly equine welfare and to prove due diligence when spending charitable funds and also a duty of care to ensure that our participants have the best and the safest experience that they can. Our horses are hopefully a long term investment. And although we realise this creates an extra cost for groups, we are hoping that in the long run, that it would save you money, particularly if it had been a horse that, you know, had something flagged upon the vetting that could have cost you money a bit further down the line. So if you want any more information on this policy or to read it, then you can log on to my RDA and click on the policies page. There's also, also a written guide about the stages of vetting on the equine page of the my RDA website. So having your horses vetted is one thing, but we know finding the right horse is something completely different. And I pretty much every day at the moment hear groups having problems looking for their perfect horse. So short of cloning 15 to weight bearing cops, which would probably make me a millionaire, I have been exploring other options to try and help groups where we can. Uh, luckily, HorseQuest have um, allowed RDA groups to post free adverts on their website. They can be for sale adverts or they can be for wanted adverts. They need to be no more than 100 words and email to inquiries at horsequest.co.uk. You can find this information on the equine page of my RDA under support and guidance. This has been previously successful for talent equitation when they've been looking for their schoolmasters. And my contact at Horsequest has said that quite often owners can need to move a horse on for whatever reason but just don't feel that they can write that advert. So rather than do that, they will look at the wanted adverts and contact the person directly. So this just kind of um, cuts out the middleman for them really. The, the second thing that we've done is set up a Facebook page called RDA Equine. This can be for sharing adverts. It can be placed in wanted adverts, or if you've seen a horse perhaps in another region and you can't travel for any reason, then you can put a shout out on there asking someone from another RDA group to go and have a look at it for you. We've also had a WhatsApp group that Doug Smith created during the first lockdown for groups who own and loan their own horses. And this has been an absolute fantastic resource for communication about equine matters between groups. And this has been going for coming up to a year now, I'd say. For Sourcing Horses, we've also got two more projects in the pipeline. One is a partnership with the Blue Cross, and I know many of you will have heard me touch on this previously, and it's been a bit of a, a slow burner. Um, but Doug have, and I have visited the Blue Cross just basically to discuss the needs of both of our organisations, and it was a really, really successful meeting, to be honest. Um, and we've recently conducted a survey to groups to recognise what they need, and we're now in a position to approach the, the Blue Cross and move this project forward. Our other situation that some of you may be aware of is that an email went round recently inviting groups to register their interest in horses from a trekking centre that is closing down. We had 158 requests for horses in total, which was quite a few. Um, and I can't say much more on this project at the moment, but we are in the process of moving this forward. And it's something that will happen pretty quickly, which I know will be great news for groups 
the logistics of this project are on a par with Brexit. So it's taken quite a bit of working out about how to proceed, but watch this space. Finally, my other concern with sourcing horses is the public perception of the ideal RDA horse. I get phone calls and emails pretty much on a weekly basis being offered horses that are considered ideal. Quite often they are elderly, they've got health issues, injuries and so on, and just generally not what we're looking for. On the back of this, Doug and I created the Equine Initial Interest Form. So when I get offers of horses now, I send this form out to these people. And it's quite a comprehensive form and it's got lots of different questions on it. And quite often now when people look at this form and start to fill it in for their elderly, lame or, you know, poorly horse, they will, they will see what we need and quite often I will never hear from them again. They also see on this form that we've, they've got to pass a two-stage vetting at least. So I think in some cases that also puts them off. But at least, you know, it helps filter out the good from the bad and helps us with sourcing our horses. I think my main concern is what do the public think that RDA do to need this kind of horse? Um, and that's been bothering me quite a bit recently. So to try and challenge this public perception, I've enlisted the support of Horse and Hound. And for any of you who read it today, they've written an absolutely fantastic article for RDA, talking about all the issues that I've just previously mentioned. And although, you know, all our horses come in all different shapes and sizes, they still need to be fit, healthy, athletic, you know, sound in mind and body to be able to cope with all the different activities that RDA can throw at them. And I think the main message that I want to get across is, and I, you know, I'd like groups to help me with this as much as you possibly can, is that the R in RDA does not stand for retirement, rehab, rescue. We're a serious organisation and we really want the public to take us seriously and recognise and appreciate this. So thank you very much, Sarah Healing and Sheila Sainer as well, for helping us with this um, great article in Horse and Hound. And I really hope it, it has the, de the desired effect. <laughs> so that's enough for me rambling on. I'm going to hand over now to Nick Hart. Thank you, Nick. OK, thank you very much. Um, yes, I agree that um, uh, the vetting exam or pre-purchase examination. Yes, I've stopped using PPE as a as a as a shortening now. It just doesn't feel doesn't feel appropriate. So yes, I, I'll probably refer to them as vettings. Um, but uh, yeah, I agree. A vetting exam is an essential part of um, the process of of buying a horse. Um, I just wanted to talk through uh, what the examination entails. It is essentially a very thorough examination of the horse uh, that follows a set procedure um, to try and identify any current problems the horse may have or give a clue to um, previous or potential future problems um, that uh, may have afflicted the horse in the past or, or may afflict it in future. And once we've done that examination, we, we're using that to determine whether the horse is suitable to do a very um, strictly defined job. So you're buying a horse for RDA activities, um, and I, I need to assess whether that horse is suitable to do RDA activities. It does mean that you might um, recommend a horse is suitable for purchase for one type of activity, but fail them or not recommend them um, for uh, purchase for other activities, uh, depending on what you found on your examination. Um, so, if, if one of my clients contacts me and, and, uh, and says, I found, found the, um, the horse that I'm, I'm, I'm of my dreams, um, I just need you to, to, to check it out. Uh, we'll take some details in advance. And I, I, uh, it's always worth talking to your vet um, uh, ahead of what, what you want, because um, some of the information that we'll collect will be about um, uh, any previous drug or medication administration in the, in the preceding 14 days. Um, if the horse has, I don't know, um, stood on a stone and they've given it a sachet of butte two days before you've planned to do a vetting, then that can have an impact. So um, we'd then advise not to even start the examination until a, a, a suitable length of time for the drugs to get out of their system and gone. So it's always worthwhile um, contacting the, the vet and having a good chat in advance. Um, uh, we will ask um, uh, a few basic questions about the horse. The, the, the horse's details, what you intend to do with them. And if you've got any specific worries or concerns, so if you found anything that, um, that, that troubled you um, when, when you've trialed the horse, um, then we will um, 
uh, spend extra time looking at those areas. So that's always a useful thing to, uh, to, to flag up if you've got any concerns. Um, and then we'll ask whether they're, um, the, the yard where we're going to be examining the horse has suitable facilities to, to perform a, uh, a, a thorough examination. And this is actually sometimes surprisingly hard to find. Um, the main things that we need would be a dark stable to look at the eyes um, with, a, with an ophthalmoscope. Um, the pupils need to dilate properly so we can check the back of the eye. So the stable does need to be quite dark. Um, we also need a hard or firm level surface for trotting the horse up. It's really quite challenging uh, assessing the horse's movement um, if you're um, uh, running horse up and down over potholes or you know they're landing on large stones or half a brick um, then it's, it's it's very tricky to tell and to be to be fair to the horse we need to, to give it um, uh, the best opportunity so uh, yes we need a uh, ideally flat um, flattish level um, 